Hey, this is Pastor Bungie Garrett, and I want to take this opportunity to present you with another word of encouragement. Well, as we continue to look at all of the end time events that are happening all around the world today, well, I wanted to take some time to remind you about the results of a Pew Research Center survey that they published just this past December. And according to that survey, 63% of evangelicals and 55% of Protestant believers are convinced that we're currently living in the last days. And when we factor in the 31% of mainline denominations and the 76% of historically black churches who agree, uh, well, we can see that at least half of the Christians here in America are certain that we are currently living in the last days. It's also interesting to note that the same survey has also revealed that there are many in the church today who are denying that we're living in the last days. And not only that, but they're also convinced that there is no second coming of Christ. For example, when asked if Jesus will return to the earth someday, at least 25% of the respondents who claimed to be Christian also rejected the doctrine of the second coming of, of Jesus Christ. That's right. At least 25% of, of respondents reject the doctrine of Christ's second coming. This includes almost 20% of Protestants, 14% of historically black churches, and 36% of mainline denominations. And when we add all of this up together, at least 25% of those who claim to be Christian don't really believe in the doctrine of Christ's second coming. And with that being the case, I can't help but to wonder, have these people read the Bible? <laughs> have they even read the Bible? And, and the reason I ask is because, listen, the Bible is filled with prophetic promises that point to the second coming of Jesus Christ. For example, it's in Matthew chapter 24. There the Lord Jesus describes this day by declaring, The sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. That's right. There's coming a day when those who are still here on the earth, they will see the Son of Man coming through the clouds of heaven with power and glory. And it's at that point in time when he will, he will return to judge the nations according to his holy word. The Lord Jesus doubled down on this prophetic promise. It's in Revelation chapter 1 where he declares, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. That's right. The Lord Jesus has assured us that there's coming a day when he will return. And according to John the Revelator, it's at that point in time when the nation of Israel will mourn as they realize that the Lord Jesus is actually their Messiah. Here's how the Apostle John put it. It's in Revelation chapter 1. It's verse 7 where he declares, Behold, he is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him, even they who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will mourn because of him, even so. Amen. Here in this verse, we find this first century Jew named John describing the day when the Lord Jesus will finally return. It's at that point in time when those who crucified him will begin to mourn as they realize they've been rejecting their Redeemer. And as we consider John's description of that day, well, it's interesting to note that he was actually quoting an end times prophecy that we find in the book of Zechariah. As a matter of fact, it's in Zechariah chapter 12. There, the prophet Zechariah declares, In that day, the Lord will defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The one who is feeble among them in that day shall be like David, and the house of David shall be like God, like the angel of the Lord before them. It shall be in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem, and I will pour on the house of David and on the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and supplication. Then they will look on me whom they pierced. Yes, they will mourn for him as one mourns for his only son and grieve for him as one grieves for a firstborn. Now, as we consider this Old Testament prophecy about the arrival of the promised Messiah, it might interest you to know that the prophet Zechariah was actually presenting this messianic prophecy more than 500 years before the incarnation of Jesus Christ. And yet it's here in this prophecy where we learn that the Israelites who are here when the Messiah arrives, they're going to realize that this is the same person whom their forefathers pierced there on the cross in the first century. And it's at that point in time when they will realize that Christ Jesus is in fact the promised Messiah, Yeshua HaMashiach. 
That's, it's sad that, that most 21st century Jews have been blinded by the unbelief of, of their teachers who are, are quick to either ignore or explain away the messianic prophecies that clearly reveal the identity of our Redeemer. And what's even worse is that many modern day Jews are no longer looking for a Messiah at all. As a matter of fact, there's a recent survey which was used uh, by a, a top research and polling firm there in Israel. And according to their research, 45% of Israeli Jews have given up on the belief that the Messiah is coming at a future time. This, uh, you know, the, uh, those who were part of this poll, they were asked, do you believe the Messiah is coming? And in response, 54.9% of Israeli Jews said yes, while nearly half of them said no. Joel Rosenberg elaborated on this survey by informing us that 93.8% of Israelis who voted for right-wing Orthodox political parties still believe Messiah is coming one day. And in contrast to this, 85% of Israelis who voted specifically for left-wing parties, they say no. And so we see that it's those who have embraced the progressive policies of the left who have also rejected the Messianic prophecies that, that point to the arrival of our Messiah. Rosenberg also points to another shocking revelation that's come from the same survey. And according to the research, fewer than two out of three Israeli Jews believe that the Jews are the chosen people as the Bible describes them to be. As a matter of fact, more than one in three pointedly say they don't believe they are the chosen people or indicated that they aren't sure what they believe about this. Wow, okay, so, so it was just last month when Israel celebrated the 75th anniversary of the day they declared their independence back in 1948. And while there's no doubt that the God who revealed this national resurrection back in Ezekiel chapter 37, this is, this is the same God who enabled them to reestablish themselves as a nation by giving them the supernatural strength and power they needed to defeat the powerful enemies who surrounded them back in 1948. And, and listen, I've talked with Jewish soldiers who were there 75 years ago. I've talked to Jewish soldiers who were on the battlefield at that point in time, and I've heard their stories as they recount miracle after miracle, the miracles that occurred there on the battlefield. And I've heard them give God the glory for that victory that enabled them to declare their independence. And yet here we are, 75 years later, and the land of promise is now filled with secular Jews who are no longer looking for their Messiah. How sad is that? With all this in mind, I should take a moment to remind you about the prophetic promise that Jesus made in Luke chapter 13. It's there where he declares, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the one who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her, how often I have wanted to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, but you were not willing. See, your house is left to you desolate. And assuredly, I say to you, you shall not see me until the time comes when you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Christian listeners, coming a day when the nation of Israel will finally begin to cry out with one voice, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And it's at that point in time when they will look up and they will see the one whom they pierced, returning through the clouds with power and great glory. And as we look forward to that day, let's pray for the veil of unbelief to be lifted so that the chosen of people of God, so that the, the chosen people might embrace the Messiah, Jesus Christ. At the same time, we also ought to be praying for the nominal Christians that fill the church, you know, those who think that they're believers and yet reject the doctrine of Christ's second coming. The chances are they probably really aren't trusting in Jesus at all. With that being the case, I encourage every Christian to realize that we have a limited amount of time to accomplish the great commission of Jesus Christ. And it's for this reason that I provoke every born-again believer to get out there and to preach the gospel of grace as we continue to fight the good fight of faith and all for the glory of God.